Hello again. So for this pre-recorded PowerPoint presentation is I will be showing you about glass and glass fracture and a lecture on hair and its examination. So this is a 25 slides. So please expect a longer duration of the lecture. So when we say glass, Glass is an or inorganic substance, meaning to say hindi siya nabubulok or hindi siya nade-decompose. And ang condition niya is kahit madamage na siya, inorganic pa rin siya. And analogous to that, liquid state siya pero kapag nagkaroon tayo ng chemical processes, you can reverse the liquid state of the glass and turn it into a solid one. That is why nagigis siyang rigid for practical purpose. Okay? So, ang glass natin is a fused mixture of silica. So, kung nakikita nyo yung buhangin natin, makikita nyo doon yung nakinang-kinang or parang, parang ano, grain of sugar. So, that is the silica. And then, hinahaluan siya ng soda, lime, or potash in order for it to, make, to become a rigid one. Okay? And you can add other elements for color, for hardness, kasi mayroon na tayong fiberglass, heat resistance, and other specific purposes. Okay? So remember, glass is flexible. That is the first property niya. You can bend it depending on the force. Another one is, usually the glass bends on the direction of the force. So later on, may kita nyo sa mga example kung ano yung magiging itsura ng glass depending on the force applied to it. And then it can withstand more bending and stretching before it start breaking. So may kita ninyo, limaw, yung salamin ng, ng car, binato ngaya siya. So you cannot expect that the entire window of that car will be damaged. So, may kita mo lang a certain portion of that window ngaya ang may fracture. Kasi glass can withstand more bending than stretching. Okay? So, remember also, this kind of glass examination and its fracture can serve as evidence in your investigation. Kasi yung physical property ng glass can tell you a story. So, ano yung source niya, and whether, whether that glass was broken by this kind of force, and ayon origination of the force that broke the glass. Okay? When we say glass fracture, this is caused by excessive exposure to heat. So, extreme exposure to heat, pwede magkaroon ng fracture. Pero remember... That kind of fracture is different from forceful entrance or entry of a certain force nga to your glass. Pwede din tayong magkaroon ng glass fracture due to blunt instrument or object. And of course, projectiles. So, merong tinapon na object outside and that force broke the glass. That causes also glass fracture. So, when we say types of glass fracture... Ito yung mga common na fracture na makikita nyo sa investigation ninyo. So, the first one is radial. Pag sinabi natin radial fracture, makikita mo siya na para siyang spokes of a wheel. Ano yung spokes of a wheel? Yung parang mga wires or mga metal na nasa wheel. And of course, pag nag-break ang glass... Ang liner that re, uh, re, radiate from the hole are called radial fracture. Okay? So, as the front of the glass is pushed in the opposite side, nagkakaroon siya ng bending backward. And kapag na, nakuha niya na yung pinaka-limit niya, saka siya magkakaroon ng radial line. So, halimbawa, merong forceful entry sa glass. Hanggat kayo pa ng glass, hindi siya magkakaroon ng radial fracture. Okay? So, makikita mo sa evidence mo na anong klaseng object yung ginamit. Kaya, nagkaroon siya ng radial fracture. Okay? So, this is an example of the radial fracture. So, makikita nyo dito sa isang picture. 
na hindi siya nag-crack. Walang crack na nangyari dito sa sa left as a right rather. Walang crack na nangyari hanggang hanggat hindi hindi na exhibit nung glass or hindi na attain nung glass yung kanyang pinaka limit. Okay? At kapag nagkaroon ng radial fracture or yung mga guhit-guhit, meaning to say the force is no longer ano, is no longer is cannot be withstand by the the glass itself. Okay? So that is the radial fracture. Another is the concentric fracture. When we say concentric, secondary po siya. So circle siya, ang appearance niya, yung radial is pa triangle. Yung secondary fracture na ito is around the point of impact connecting one radiating crack to another. So that is why umuumbok ang concentric fracture. Kasi nagko-connect-connect na all together yung kanyang mga radial fracture. So, pag nakaikot na siya into one circle, ang tawag na natin doon, may kita nyo siya as bumilog siya. Ang tawag natin doon is concentric fracture. Okay, dito sa gilid may kita nyo yung picture sa ilalim na radial fracture is yung mga guhit, unang guhit, after magkaroon ng, ng entrance ng object na yon. Okay? Ang concentric fracture na yon is yun namang umikot pagkatapos magkaroon ng mga guhit-guhit or ng radial fracture. Okay? Remember, ang radial fracture are the first fracture that is, that that will, that you can see in an object. So, pag nagkaroon siya ng paikot after magkaroon ng radial fracture, ang tawag natin doon is concentric fracture. Okay. So, remember, triangles are created between fracture. Ang tawag natin doon is radial fracture. So, kapag nagkaroon ng panibagong triangle, doon magkakaroon ng concentric fracture. So, dito, concentric fracture originate on the front of the glass. Okay? So, yon. Another one is conchoidal fracture. When we say conchoidal fracture, ito sa edges, sa mga dulo ng glass. Okay, that is having elevation or depression. May kita niya sa ilalim yung example. Okay, so ano ang pagkakaiba ng radial fracture sa conchoidal fracture and concentric fracture? Ang radial at concentric is usually nasa pinaka-center ng glass. Or kahit hindi center, malapit sa gilid. Pero hindi siya yung edge. Pag nag-edge na siya, ang tawag natin doon is conchoidal fracture. Okay. So remember, fracture caused by excessive exposure to heat are different kasi wala siyang pattern po ng radial and concentric and conchoidal fracture. Ang fracture na da, na caused by heat are wave shaped. And then may kita niyo dito na magkakaroon siya ng stress line. When we say stress line, May mga glass na na-expose siya sa sobrang tagal niya nang expose doon sa heat or sa init. Ang nangyayari is, nagsa-start siya from expansion, stretching, mula, kunyari, center, palit ng palit yung kanyang wave. Okay? And you can reconstruct this using uh, also a heat. So, and, and ang thorough examination of glass fracture or if it is caused by impact of a blunt instrument, will reveal you either a radial and concentric fracture. Okay? Pag naman po, caused by impact of a blunt instrument, nagkakaroon siya ng parehong radial and concentric fraction. Pag, pag caused by impact lang, radial and concentric din siya. Okay? How about projectiles? So, Yung fracture na dahilan dito, halimbawa, is bullet or, or ba bala ng barrel, pebble, or maliliit na bato, or bakal. <clears throat> Ang nangyayari is, magkakaroon siya ng no bulging of the glass. Ano pa din siya? Flat, flat pa din yung glass. Walang bulging. Kasi po, yon blunt yung force na nangyayari. So, ang bilis ng force. 
So, no radial cracks or penetration of high-velocity projectiles will produce dahil wala siyang exit. Unlike ng normal lang na cost ng fracture. So, meaning to say, magkakaroon lang siya ng larger cracks if may exit na or may panibagong fracture dun sa malapit sa kanya. Okay? So, why is it that we are studying the glass fracture? The first thing is, tinitingnan natin dito yung point of impact. So, kung nakita natin na nag-bulge yung glass, meaning to say, hindi siya, hindi siya due to stone or hindi siya dahil sa sa ano, sa bullet, but rather, nagkaroon siya ng stretching muna ng glass before it rupture. Okay? So, pag may ridge kayong nakita sa gilid, may irregularity doon na nangyari. That is why, perpendicular siya sa opposite of the impact. So, katapat siya nun. So, may kita nyo na kapag high stress yung, yung glass fracture, may kita mo na may ridges siya sa pinakagilid. Okay? So, generally also, ang nangyayari, pag merong hole produced by a bullet, meron siyang sharp edges. So, kapag nasa malayo yung, yung distance nung nag-fire nung bullet, ang makikita nyo is, kapareha siya nung, nung fracture ng bato, kung saan magkakaroon siya ng pressure. Ano ang mangyayari? A shot few inches from the glass will produce a similar result, pero matatarnish na siya lahat. Halos mag-smash yung entire glass. Pero kapag sa malayo, ang kanyang itsura is halos kapareho siya ng pagkakabato ng bato. Okay? Fracture ng bato. So, and usually po, a bullet will make a clear cut hole in the side of entrance than the exit side. So, may kita mo pag bullet, nasa center siya, hindi sa exit. So, if a shot is fired perpendicularly, so, kung nakatapat siya sa gilid ng glass, ang mangyayari is magkakaroon siya ng crater, pero walang flaking. So, yon. Ang depression will be produced on the exit of the glass kung nag-rebound or umuga yung glass. So, pag sinabi natin depression, magkakaroon ng uka yung yung glass kung nagkare nagkaroon ng ng ano rebound of the glass na alog yung glass okay and then entrance and exit hole dito may kita nyo na ang exit is bigger than the entry for a reason so ang point of entry has a smooth hole while the exit hole has the characteristic of roughness so ano yung pinakaunang ngayon, may bullet hole ngayon sa glass. Alin yung pinakauna? Usually, yun yung maliit. Pero yung pinakalast na na tama ng barrel is the one na pinakamalaki. Okay? That is the entrance. Yung pinakamaliit yung entrance, yung pinakauna. Exit is yung pinakahuli. Okay? At makikita nyo na mas rough yung characteristic ng exit than the entrance. Doon ka na makakita sa exit ng radial and concentric fracture. Okay? Another one is cause of glass fracture. The first one is natural means. Ito ay natural. So, meaning to say, sobrang tagal nang expose ng glass sa sunlight or sa heat. So, example, ah, ano pa? Ngayon, nasusunog yung bahay, you expect that the glass will have a wavy lines. Pero pag mechanical means, meron siyang regular pattern or concentric fracture. Nakita nyo, example. Okay? Meron din siyang entrance and exit. Nakikita nyo yung, yung differences nito. Pag exit side, radial fracture, rugged edges, may depression and with flaking. Okay, how about the position of the shooter? When we say position of the shooter, Nasaan yung nag-shoot? Pag perpendicular, katapat niya lang yung glass. mag exhibit siya ng even distribution. Pag sinabi natin even distribution, yung crack niya is even. Pag medyo malayo-layo siya, angle from right, magkakaroon siya ng flaking on the left. 
So, ang flaking is nasa left. Kung nasa right yung tao, ang flaking ng fracture ng, ng glass is sa left. Because of the pressure. And then, kung yung tao namang bumaril kanyari is nasa left, yung flaking is nasa right. So, please recall that. And then, or remember that. And then, for the age of fracture, pag fresh, meron siyang linear pattern. Or meron siyang radial or concentric fracture. Pero pag old fracture na, nagkakaroon siya na extension line. Pag sinabi natin extension line, yung naunang fracture, dahil sa katagalan na nagkaroon siya na exposure sa heat, nagkakaroon siya ng dagdag na cracks. Pero yung cracks niya is, walang uniformity. So, nag extend lang siya ng konti. Pero hindi siya kapares nung naon ng fracture, ng fresh fracture na buong-buo or isang buong specimen yung makikita mo. Okay? Let us continue now with hair and hair examination. So, few slides lang ito. Okay? Remember, hair is the outermost covering of our body part. Except, sa katawan natin, meron, la- meron tayong chance na tubuan ng buhok lahat ng parte ng katawan natin except yung palm natin yung pinaka ano ng kamay natin and then the sole of our foot or which is our talampakan yung palm is our yung pinaka panghawak natin sa kamay okay and thorough examination of of the hair can be determine what kind of samples are available So, using a microscope, if it is animal or human, and kung animal origin, kanino galing, <clears throat> and then pag human origin, anong uri ng human siya, kung anong lahi ng human, etc. Kasi remember, sometimes, dun sa, sa crime scene, may animal hairs na available. Probably yung tao nga is nagkakatay ng baboy, so merong possibility ng hair of that animal in the crime scene. Okay, nag-aalaga ng horse, cow, carabao, etc. Okay, so we can determine it using a thorough examination using microscope. Okay, in cases of human hair, paano natin malalaman or magagamit ito sa investigation natin? The first one is the race of a person. Ano yan, negroid, yung medyo may item. Mongolian is yung, Mongolian is yung, yon ka-color ng mga Chinese. Okay? Caucasian naman is, Caucasian, if I'm not mistaken, is yung mga European. Okay? The area of the body surface. So, saan galing yung hair? It can be either coming from head, face, chest, axilla, and pubic region. So, paano nakuha yung hair? Naturally or forcibly? Pag forcibly, possible, possibility nito is nagkaroon ng involvement yung tao na yon in a certain tragic event ngayon ng rape so sinabunutan yung tao or nasabunutan ngayon yung suspect so forcibly yung nature ng removal of the hair and whether the hair was cut with a dull or shaped instrument and then of course ang hair po cannot give you a conclusive determination of the sex of the suspect hindi sinasabi ng hair kung lalaki or babae yung buhok kasi paras lang din naman yung buhok sa sa upper region ng lalaki at babae. Okay? So, ang structural part niyan, may kita niyo yan sa, sa later, sa last part. Cuticle po is yung may scale-like appearance. Cortex naman is yung merong pigment. And ang medulla is yung pinakasgitna ng hair. Outer aspect naman, pag sinabi natin inner aspect, yung pinakaloob ng strand ng hair. Pag outer aspect is yung hair, kung saan meron siyang tip, shaft, and root. Ano yung tip niya? The distal end portion of the hair. Okay? When we say tip, so the distal end portion of the hair, paano to? So, ang tip is yung pinakadulo ng hair. Pag shaft naman is yung portion above the hair, Surface, ah, surface of the skull. Ito yung nakabaon. That is the shaft. Yung root naman is yung, por- ah, so, sorry. Yung shaft is yung portion na nasa ibabaw ng skin natin. And then, yung root naman is yung nakabaon. So, etang example ng cortex. Ang cortex is 
yung natural pigment. Medula is yung pinaka-center ng hair. Ang cuticle niya is yung pinaka-outermost surface. Okay? So, may kita niya dito yung follicle sa ilalim. Yung nakabaon. Root is yung... Root is yung naka-embed. Yung nasa pinaka-ilalim. Yung pag binunot mo siya yung may kulay puti. Okay? Shaft is yung pinaka-gitna ng hair na usually nakaangat mula sa skin or mula sa, ski, uh, sa skull natin. And then tip is yung pinaka-dulo. Okay, question? Thank you so much for listening.